for the longest time, I thought that manual focus was one of those things that was solely reserved for these real filmmakers and big production crews that could afford a first AC or somebody to pull focus. So in this video, I'm gonna show you why that's baloney and I'm gonna share five tips to help you nail your focus manually every single time. Let me just start out by saying there's absolutely nothing wrong with using autofocus. There seem to be a community of filmmakers somewhere that just love to poo poo on people who use autofocus. And I just wanted to reassure you that autofocus, just like any other setting on your camera, is a tool. And just like every tool that you would use to build a house, for example, you have specific tools for specific jobs. So really, it's all about finding the right tool for the job. So in this video, I wanna equip you with those tools for when autofocus just won't cut it for that job. Tip number one is gonna involve looking around in your camera settings a little bit and finding something called linear focus. Now, you're gonna want linear focus on. If you're looking around in your settings and you can't find that option anywhere, it's most likely set to linear focus by default, so you're good to go. But some cameras allow you to actually set your focus to non-linear. Now with non-linear focus, the faster you turn the ring, regardless of the physical distance you actually rotate it, the faster the focus will change. This can come in handy if you really need to make a quick and dramatic focus rack and you don't have the ability to physically turn the ring that much that fast, or if you really wanna slowly fine tune your adjustment and focus. Now because of this variability, I do not recommend you use non-linear focus. You should have it set to linear, especially whenever you're just starting out with manual focus. Now with linear focus, the focus speed and the throw distance, or the actual physical rotation of the focus ring, is consistent no matter how quickly or slowly you turn the ring. So tip number one is making sure your camera is set to linear focus. Tip number two is to use focus peaking. Most cameras these days have some level of focus assistance built in, whether that's focus peaking or otherwise, so use it. Focus peaking puts a thin highlight around the objects that are sharp or in focus. Most cameras and external monitors allow you to adjust the color or intensity of the peaking, but I usually just have mine set to red high. This is just great because it actually takes a lot of the guesswork out of focusing. I, I don't have perfect vision, so even with glasses or contacts, sometimes I might not see things as sharp as they really might be. So having this right on my camera or monitor is really just invaluable to help keep me Focus. Which takes me to number three is to use a bigger screen to help you pull focus. If you can afford it, I highly recommend investing in an external monitor of some sort. Some cameras can sync up to like an iPhone app and others you can plug into like a computer monitor or a TV. You'll just be tethered, so that's the only downside to that. I personally use the Atmos Ninja 5 or V. It's also a built-in recorder so I can film and record my files straight to an SSD. But if you don't need that functionality and you just need a larger screen, there are a lot of other really great options for usually a little bit less money that I'll have linked in the description. I think that having a bigger screen really sells itself on why it comes in handy when focusing. For one, you just see better. Everything is obviously bigger, you get a little bit more detail, and a lot of times that means the focus peaking is gonna be more visible, and so you can really see whenever you've hit your focus point. Tip number four is a tried and true method that's been used in Hollywood and big productions for ages, and that is the tape and pin method. This really comes in handy for focus racks or situations where you need to quickly and accurately focus to two different subjects in a repeatable way. Most lenses have a center mark on the focus wheel, and if they don't, just use a second piece of tape and make your own. Then what you'll do is take a piece of tape and put it either on the focus ring or the barrel of your lens, whichever one doesn't have that middle line, and then just set your focus. Whenever you set your focus on the first point, just mark the tape along with that middle line, and then you can like label it A or one or whatever and then you go to the second one, you do the same thing, you mark your line and then you can label it, you know, B or two or whatever. Assuming your camera is locked off on a tripod or at least just not moving much, this is a really great way to quickly and accurately focus back and forth between two subjects. Now, probably the most important tip of them all, tip number five, which is practice. Now, I know this might not be a tip or hack that you want on this list, but practice is an absolutely vital component to become proficient in any skill. So obviously, the more that you practice with your equipment, the more comfortable you'll become using it. So practice manual focus on your pets, your friends, your neighbor. The point is just go out and film something. Now, for me, one of the coolest things about learning how to manually focus is opening myself up to this whole array of vintage lenses from these old school film cameras you can actually adapt and use on your mirrorless cameras. Obviously, most of them are only manually focused. So if you want to see a video I did about that, click here and I'll see you there.